Bookaholics, so welcome back to another video. Today I am bringing you a dedicated series review of the Queen of the Tailing series by Erica Johansson. <laughs> Queen of the Tailing series is a sci-fi dystopian uh, epic fantasy series that consists of The Queen of the Tailing, The Invasion of the Tailing and The Fate of the Tailing. The Queen of the Tailing is a story which follows Kelsey who is the daughter of the recent queen. She has been kept in hiding for safeguarding until she turns 19 when she is suddenly summoned to ascend the throne. If she is able to survive ascending to the throne then she has big plans but getting to your throne is going to be difficult because she will have to prize it from the claws of her tyrannical uncle. Now Kelsey is to inherit the tailing and the tailing is a weaker country that is surrounded by a much more forceful country and a few years ago when Kelsey was young and her mother was queen a tentative peace was created between the tailing and Mort which is the country that um, is next to it and the peace was brokered under the basis that people from the tailing would be sent over as slaves as an offering of peace to this neighboring country. This is something that Kelsey finds abhorrent and plans to undo once she becomes queen. We we have a very interesting setup sociologically here. So this world is so we messed up Earth, we got on ships, we went to another planet. And it's, it's very Puritan in the sense of like, they basically became Amish. They just went back to how things were before. And clearly somewhere along the way, we also instilled aristocracy for reasons unknown. The setup is very England versus France. The Montmans, which is the neighboring evil kingdom is very much France and the tailing is, it's a po I think it's, it gives me vibes of being England, but England never did the whole sending slaves across to France thing. But like, if you're going off of like names and and certain cultural things, it's England versus France. I'm gonna go into my expectations before I go into any other thoughts. Expectations. Now, going into the series, I had heard good things about the series, and then some people being disappointed by the ending. I can get behind the series. It's got a slightly disappointing ending if it's got a really good setup. So I was still really excited to get into this. You know, epic fantasy, female protagonist, written by a woman. It's always going to be up my alley. It's something that I am always going to be excited to give a go. And so I jumped in slightly blind, but very excited to be trying out the series. The characters in this series, which is the part I always start with in my reviews, we're going to start with the characters. The characters in this series, one, before we get into the actual characters, the names of the characters really took me out of the story a lot of the time. We just, we have, so the, the main girl called Kelsey, it just sounds like, like white bread American name. Like it's got the fantasy spelling, it's K-E-L-S-E-A, but like it's, it, it's, it's white bread American name, but okay, fine, we have Kelsey. And then... One of the like ancestors of Kelsey's was called William Tear, and that's why it's called the Tearling. And by God, they always call him William Tear. We get later on, we actually get scenes where William Tear is interacting with other people, with people of his acquaintance, and they call him William William Tear. Like, even his romantic interest calls him William Tear. Not just William, which, you know, if it's someone you know, they're normally a Will, maybe a Liam. No, William, fine, okay, intense, but fine. Tear. We need the whole second name. That's like if I just, every time I talk to my husband, call him by his full name. It just made no sense. And that was annoying. And a lot of the names in here were weird. And we had people with nicknames. And yeah, it just, the name thing was annoying. 
characters. Now we've got some characters in here, we've got some grown morality in here, we've got some characters with the shady past but they're trying to do right by themselves now we have kelsey who is a little bit of like a bulldozer in the sense of like everything i do is right and she kind of gets you know a little bit carried away at times but i enjoyed the characters there were a lot of characters that i enjoyed the freaking evil queen was just generically evil queen like it, you could swap her she's called like they call her the red queen and any woman you have ever pictured as the red queen or the red lady you know you know, like Missandre, 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 whatever her name was in Game of Thrones, the Red Queen in Alice in Wonderland, just any of the red ladies. Yeah, that's her. Do you know what I mean? Like you have this solid picture in your head of exactly what they're going to be because they're always the same. They just always wear red and they always have red hair and they always act more ha ha evil. So that was kind of a letdown. But I did actually like the protagonists. I did like some of the complexities that came with the relationships between the characters as well. I like that we had discussions around like relationships between ranks. I think they could have been handled better but I liked that there was at least a discussion around it I liked that the whole idea of someone like feeling unattractive um and other people not being attracted to her and that how it made her feel etc uh, there were uh, certain character dynamics that I enjoyed and I, I did actually like the discussions around them and I did really like some of the secondary characters a lot there's a character in here who is a mother who wants to take care of her kids and I, I really appreciated that I always really like seeing mothers represented in stories there was also a different mother in here who is a terrible mother and I, I like that there was discussion around you know different angles that come with parenting as well it wasn't hugely prevalent but I did enjoy those things as well and there were some characters from like a different timeline kind of thing that we get later on where we kind of see the formation of this world um, which again I also liked so there were a lot of things that I liked when it came to the characters so the villain is the worst part of it by far and Kelsey can be a bit annoying but yeah characters good names bad and now we're going to get into the plot now the first book, I, I, I liked the plot. I liked that it was very much just someone coming in and tearing down a system that's wrong. Not trying to fix a system, not trying to rearrange a system, just being like, all right, we're going to tear this down and see what the consequences are. And I, I liked that she was putting privileged people in check. And I really liked that we had a lot of the discussions that you see a lot of time in fantasy of like, you need to keep the nobility on side because they will be the backbone of blah, blah, blah. No. I really liked that you had that advice and you had someone go, yeah, but it's not for me. And I appreciated that. I really like that we have certain discussions around tearing down privilege and and someone who has not necessarily been educated with the same amount of privilege that she was due and therefore ends up being able to have more empathy and understand where her privilege is coming from. And I really liked the deconstruction of that. I Again, I don't think that this book goes into anywhere near as much of a discussion as I would like. And especially because I am someone who really, really enjoys themes in books. Like themes tend to be what make a series a favourite for me. Either because it addresses loads of things like Robin Hobb or if it just completely tackles, deconstructs, dismantles and punches in the gut a theme like the Poppy War, for example. Themes are really important to me. I don't think that any of these drove home hard enough, in my opinion, but I did like a lot of the things that were touched upon. So would have wanted more, but I'm glad with what we got at least. So there's that. And I do think that it is addressed well. And I think that the plot really leaned into giving you some some ideas around how this society would work and therefore what is wrong with it, which you can then take away into your own society, should you wish to. The plot itself, I did have problems with though. So the first book I was fine with. The second book, we start to get introduced to a second timeline um, through visions. I'm gonna keep it spoiler free, so I'm not gonna go much further than that, but we get some visions, we get a second timeline. Um, and that gets introduced in the second book. And then in the third book, we have, we need a reset. And the way they decide to reset is not for me. I just, I, I absolutely 
hate the way that it was handled and I could see it coming from early on in the third book where it was going to go and I just sat there and prayed it wasn't going to be that way and it was anyway. So I had a lot of problems with how the plot concluded because a lot of the themes that were brought up and a lot of the issues that were brought up and a lot of things that I wanted to see tackled instead were just dissolved which didn't work for me because it just meant that you're not dealing with these things you're not tackling these things you're undoing them so you know in in the real world if you have a problem you have to confront it you just can't you can't just go wipe it clean you need to confront it and I really really felt like this series completely chickened out of a lot of things and I yeah I was really disappointed by that so the plot for me absolute no-go. I ended up giving the last book I think two stars and those two stars were because I did enjoy the characters and because I did enjoy this setup and I enjoyed a lot of the other resolutions that we had from characters. I just didn't enjoy the ending of the plot. So yeah I was incredibly disappointed by the last book and the plot is the thing at fault here for me. The development throughout the series that I have found is that I liked this first one. This one had a slightly more generic setup. It had like a very typical kind of way of going about it. The second book, there were problems that I had when it came to Kelsey's character arc in this one. There were certain things that I found annoying and irritating and, and that I found had been done a lot and have been done better. But all of the other elements I really, really liked in this one. So this one kind of dipped in terms of Kelsey as a protagonist. And obviously the, the problems that I still had with the first one were still present in here. So it did dip slightly, but I did enjoy all of the other aspects to it. And there were definitely some reveals in here that I really enjoyed. I didn't, they weren't necessarily surprising, but they were enjoyable. So it's one of those where the groundwork was laid well enough that they didn't feel like they came out of left field um, and weren't there just for shock value. So there was that. And then of course, the way the development went with the series, meaning that I ended up despising this last book, which meant that, you know, developmentally, I just find that it felt almost purposeless to have read the series with how it concludes. So did I enjoy the series? Yes, if you took away the ending, sure but if you take away the ending then it's unresolved and therefore it'll also be unsatisfying but a dissatisfying ending would be better than this ending I'm not gonna lie but it just felt like it, there was no point in having read the series so even though I enjoyed books one and two retroactively they mean nothing with how it ends so there was no point in having read it which is a real shame the writing of the book I found really compelling it was really easy to get through there's no floweriness there's no purple bros there's no metaphor there's no nothing it gets straight to the point gets you straight through it it has the ease of YA without reading like YA um, it would be easier, I think, for the author to have written it as YA because there were a lot of things about it that kind of leaned into YA and the author didn't go there and I appreciate that. She didn't dumb it down, she didn't ease it up and she didn't because I think if she'd have written it as YA it would have been one of those that have been almost condescending YA and I don't like those. So I think that she did a really good job of writing the story in terms of the actual language used, in terms of the way she expressed herself for the story. I just didn't like the ending of the story, but I don't have any fault at all with the writing. The same can be said for the pacing. I found the pacing very compelling. There were enough like dips in action for you to feel calm, for you to get to know characters, for you to recompose yourself, but enough action to keep you reading through the books. So I definitely enjoyed both the writing and the pacing, but once again without the plot they mean nothing. The world building in here I do think is kind of one of the low points in the series. I do find it kind of generic. I did like that we had the whole like it's a fantasy world but it is because of people leaving Earth to go live somewhere else. I did like that. I found the magic to be questionable at best and with it having ties to Earth I found that the magic didn't make much sense and didn't work for me personally 
but I can see where it came from and I think it was well crafted. There were just certain elements of it that didn't work for me because I am someone who really fixates on things being kind of logical when they are earth-based. So when they're in a fantasy, complete fantasy world, you can kind of do what you want. Like I will buy into it. You can make whatever you want and I will buy into it. As soon as you link it to reality, to things that differ too far from reality become difficult for me to get on board with. I need complete dissociation. I can't do this whole like earth is a thing but not really a real thing because none of it actually makes sense in terms of earth. Um, and I, I just don't feel like the explanations for certain things actually made enough sense for me personally. So I did struggle there a little bit and I think that is also also led to some of my issues with the series, especially later on in the series where we see those linked much more than we do in the first book. Overall, therefore, is this a series I would recommend? No, not really. I, I have no, no one I would rec recommend this to. There are series that are similar enough that I think do it better. And I just, Again, the ending of this series, I mean, there are people out there who like it, so I might be entirely wrong, but just for me, reading this series, the way it ended, it just, I needn't have read it. And that was the problem that I had, that there was no point in, in reading this series. And that's a shame. So it, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know who to recommend this to. I mean, if it sounds interesting to you, then go ahead and give it a go. But also bear in mind that even if you enjoy the first and second book, that doesn't mean you'll enjoy how it ends. So just understand that when you're reading this series, read each book as it comes and just read that book for what it is. Because if you are reading it as like part of a whole, then you will, as I was, end up somewhat disappointed, I think, anyway. So yeah that that is it that's all I have really for this review is just lukewarm feelings towards the first two having had them dampened from book three and book three being terrible in my opinion again not even all of book three I didn't even dislike all of book three I mean as I said I could see it coming where it was going and just spent the whole book hoping that wouldn't happen and it did but I didn't dislike book three I just dislike how book three ended I felt cheated and I felt robbed and I was annoyed by it so that being said, that is it for this review. So if you have enjoyed this, then um, thanks. And I have a whole playlist of reviews for series reviews. If you want to go check it out and check out any of my other reviews. Um, but yeah, that is all from me for today. So thank you ever so much for watching. And I will hopefully catch you in another one soon. Bye, guys.